let's look at sketching graphs because as I said yesterday if we can work out the picture then working out things like domain and range and that so much easier so some general ideas well the type of pattern is usually determined by the shape of the data so we look at the data now if we can approximate the start with a known function then when we need to analyze the data that becomes easier and then you can use it to predict and, and things like that so this is why we want to know what the shapes are now, when we plot our data important things consistent scale is required okay now it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have the same scale on the y-axis as you do the x-axis okay but along one axis it needs to be the same the only time I guess where it's important to have the same scale on x and y is if we talk about circles so if you had a different scale on your x and y axis and you want to draw a circle well your circle is going to look like an ellipse rather than a circle so known functions key pieces of data the y-intercept very easy to find it's when x equals zero you just substitute the number zero in you know where the y intercept is x intercepts not always as easy to find you make y equal to zero depends on what sort of equation you have to solve then linear functions obviously easy quadratics we know how to do once we start getting to the cubics and above that it gets a little bit harder and then of course there's all other functions we could have as well so I generally only find x intercepts if they're easy to do if it's a difficult one I usually don't bother but once you've found the intercepts that combined with the shape you can get a rough sketch and it's just a rough sketch more accuracy you want more points if you want specific features then you can determine that from its equation itself and once we start looking at calculus that gives us a whole range of different things that allow us to analyze curves and work out an even better picture of a graph but never ever forget the most basic idea which you probably learned I don't know year seven something like that a table of values to whether or not you actually draw the table of values but or just physically plot some points you just pick random values and plot them and you get a feel for what the curve's doing so if you're unsure just plot some points you know well, what's this curve doing okay let's start with the most basic function of them all the linear function and the most basic linear function is y equals x now any straight line demonstrates direct variation so when we plot our data if it ends up in a straight line we know there's direct variation between the two pieces of data so let's say this is what we call the linear function makes sense it's the function that produces a line now when you're using real data and you've probably seen this in science reality is not as nice and they don't usually fall in a straight line because you get little errors in experiments and things like that and that's where we have things like a line of best fit we try and get the best line that will go through that data but you can see roughly when you plot them that yeah it does look like this has got a linear trend we're just going to work out the one that best fits the data that we have now all straight lines can be transformed from the basic equation y equals x we might use a rotation a translation a reflection or a combination of all of these but we can get it to any straight line we like how do you recognize it well we know straight lines can be rearranged into this sort of form y equals mx plus b basically the power of both the pro numerals is one you see that and you are oh, okay I've probably got some sort of linear function here this is when we express it with the dependent variable so y is the dependent variable as the subject now when it's in this form though the coefficient of x tells us the slope of the line and the number by itself tells us the y intercept so that's information we can draw from the equation there's some special straight lines ones that are parallel to the x-axis will always be y equals some constant there's an example of one it goes through the point 3 2 we know it's got the equation in this case y equals 2 uh, because it doesn't matter which point we pick on that line the y value will always be 2 is it in the form y equals mx plus b yeah I guess it is because the slope of that line is 0 so you have 0x plus the y-intercept well the y-intercept is 2 so it is still in that form any line parallel to the y-axis is x equals a constant value and so for this one it'll be x equals 3 
typical sort of question, show that. Now when you see a show that question, so it's not saying prove or anything like that, it's simply saying show that. It's perfectly acceptable to simply substitute the number in and go, oh look, it works. You've showed that it's true. So show that question's perfectly acceptable. Substitute in the given information and show that the expression is true. So in this one, I'd go, oh, look at that. X plus Y is two plus four. Oh, that's six. It is six. Yes. It must lie on the line X plus Y equals six. Okay. That'll do us.